What's up, YouTube? Poor Man Podcast, back with another video. Uh, this is just going to be a quick video. I was just scrolling on Facebook, seeing this on my news feed, and just thought I'd react to it quickly. Uh, but before I get into the video, though, I do want to give you guys a, a, a little warning, a little heads up. There is some blood in this video. I know blood makes peop some people very uncomfortable, so I did want to warn y'all. It's not a lot of blood, right? It's, it's super brief on the screen. But basically what they're doing is draining the fluid from her plastic surgery, right? So there is a little bit of blood in the video, and I, I know that makes some people uncomfortable, so I just wanted to warn y'all. But let's get right into the video. Nice. Yeah. This is fluid build up. <laughs> no, I want to show them. This is for fluid build up, okay? You see? Because she was eating. Oh my God. Hot sauce. Life. This is my last live, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. What are you doing? I'm, I'm doing it. With you, the, with the, what are you doing? I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse too, y'all. Don't worry. She's a nurse too. <laughs> She's a nurse, don't worry. Yeah. Just draining fluid from her stomach. Nothing this to see is here. Fluid build up, guys. Okay. From all the hot sauce. This is my last laugh, y'all. She keeps coming with my hot sauce. All the hot sauce, <laughs> all of the um onion powder, all the garlic powder, all the garlic powder, all the onion powder, and onion powder and everything. That's the end of the clip. Um maybe about a week ago. Uh, I was scrolling on YouTube and I and I seen a video of of I think it was from the early uh, early seventies or late sixties. It was of two feminists having a conversation with young Hugh Hefner, and in the conversation, the feminist the the problem that they had right was basically they believed that Hugh Hefner, the Playboy Bunny, the Playboy Mansion, everything he stood for, was objectifying women, and obviously they don't like that. Well, Hugh Hefner had a really good response, and, and it's somewhere along these lines. This isn't an exact quote, but it was just me summarizing his idea. It was basically this. I'm not forcing anybody to be here. These women come because I present them an opportunity to launch their careers, and they see this as a good way to do just that. I'm offering them an opportunity, and they're exercising their freedom of choice, which is what you're fighting for, right? You're, you, you believe it, that women should have choices, they should have options, and they should be able to exercise those options. Well, I'm just one of those options, and they've decided to exercise this option. So I'm not objectifying them. They're objectifying themselves in order to further their career, if that's what you want to call it. That's pretty much along the lines of what he said. And I couldn't agree with them anymore. You fast forward 50, 60 years, and those, those same feminists would be very upset to find that if you give women a couple of likes, a couple of comments, a couple of uh, flame emojis... They'll objectify themselves. And not only will they objectify themselves, they will fight for the right to objectify themselves. And they will go to great lengths to do so, like plastic surgery. No, men aren't sitting at, at home saying, we want women with fake butts and fake boobs. That's something that women are deciding to do at mass by themselves. Um, but this ultimately comes down to insecurity, right? That's what this is. This is insecurity. And the thing about insecurity, it's it's a problem of the mind. And something like plastic surgery doesn't solve problems of the mind. Everybody wants the quick fix. Everybody wants to fix everything but what's going on in their heads. And that's where a lot of it lies. It's part of the human condition. Understanding you're not perfect, you will never be perfect. Right? But everybody sees little things and it, there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody sees little ways that they could be better. But you have to realize, I'm okay where I am. Take Lil' Kim, for example. Uh, I consider her to be had been pretty in the 90s. She was pretty. She was talented. She had hits. But at the end of the day, you fast forward 30 years to now, and and she she she's had numerous plastic surgeries. Now, she's going to say that she didn't have those plastic surgeries. All I'm saying in the 90s, she was white uh, or she was black, and now she ain't black no more. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying in the 90s is she had a nose, and she ain't got a nose no more. She can deny the surgeries all she want, but she just look a little different, right? It might be the haircut. I don't know. She, she, she just look a little different. But at the end of the day, you find out that it doesn't matter how many records you sell. It doesn't matter how pretty you are. It doesn't matter how, how, how well you present yourself on the outside. If you don't deal with your insecurities and understand that they are normal, then 
you can go down a rabbit hole of just trying to continue to fix yourself without actually fixing yourself. Look at uh, Pepper from Salt and Pepper. Had an opportunity to be with Will Smith in the early 90s. She admits this herself. And this is maybe a, a topic for another video, but I'm explaining a little bit. She wanted to date thugs. So she decided to reject Will Smith when he was pursuing her in the early 90s. And, and so you fast forward to now. She's very insecure, $700,000 in debt due to butt implants, due to different butt surgeries. $700,000 just trying to keep up with the Joneses because you rejected men in your 20s. Now you're 50 years old and you want to continue to look like you're in your 20s so you can have those same opportunities, but those opportunities are gone. What's wrong with being average? Like, uh, like let, let's... What's wrong with people being average? The whole purpose of an average is because that's where most people are. They are in the average. Most women are fives. That's why it's the average. Most women are four, fives, and sixes. That's why it's the average. Most men make about 40 to 50K a year. That's why it's an average. It doesn't mean that you're not enough right like so many people feel like just the beauty like so many women feel like just the beauty and so many men feel like just the money means they're not enough just because you're not a 10 doesn't mean you can't be a great mother let's focus on that on a, dealing with that insecurity isn't going into the room and looking in the mirror and, and and listening to people say you're a 10 you're a 10 i'm a 10 i'm a 10 until you start being delusional dealing with that insecurity is saying i'm a six but that's okay because i'm a great mother i'm a great wife and these are things that actually make me feel fulfilled in life. If I stay off Instagram, I understand that most people don't look this way anyway. So I feel no pressure to look that way. I'm just okay with taking care of my husband, going on my one vacation a year or one vacation every other year. And that's where, where I find happiness. You look at God, uh, like, like from a guy's example, you don't have to be a good, you don't have to be a millionaire to be a great father. Plenty of good men out there that work very hard every day to provide for their families. They come home to their families. They, feel, they live very fulfilled lives and they're not millionaires, but they're happy. They have fulfillment. How many of these people, and, 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 and let's just take, for example, I know, okay, I know a family that, and we see them all the time. This isn't like something, but they're, they're a bunch of fours, right? But she's good to him and he's good to her. That's all that matters. And because they're, they're ugly, they ain't got no no options. Turns out that if you ugly, nobody else wants you. So all you have is each other. And so they're just in this bubble where, sure, they look average, but they're building a, a, a not a fortune, but they're they're financially set. They're in a good spot financially. They have kids. They they have the dog. They're happy. How many people that are nines and tens or millionaires would give up everything? Not everything. Let's not get carried away. But how many people would sacrifice a lot? Or how many people would die for that opportunity to have somebody that actually cares for them? Right? And 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 that's just the different... They, there's just two different fights. Turns out that if you have a lot of options, especially as a man, you exercise those options. And when you exercise those options, it makes it harder to focus on one woman. So you never truly get that bond. And you, you have a harder time finding that connection. Same with women. Turns out when you have a bunch of men knocking on your door... You never focus on one, so you end up 45 years old trying to look like a, a 20 year old with fake butt implants to 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 make up for lost time. And that could be part of the fight of being pretty. Everybody has their fight. Everybody has their insecurities. Everybody has the things that they they got to deal with in their lives. Nobody's perfect. It's all right to be average. Live an average life. Get an average husband. Get an average wife. Have average kids. Have a dog and, and and make an average wage and be happy. I mean, what, what are we doing here? It's all right, people. Just be average. Till next time.